Hi, and welcome to the podcast. I am Miss Stevie Mouse. I am a six-year-old grey tabby cat who's partially sighted, which means I have to be kept indoors all the time, which is a shame because I live with mummy and daddy halfway up a mountain in Italy with lovely countryside that I can't go and play in. However, I'm pleased to be finally able to bring some sanity to this blogging and podcasting business by talking about something that really matters. We all know that mummy and daddy can't do anything without me. And this writing stuff and podcasting stuff is no different. Humans are not like us. For a start, they take their fur off before they go to bed at night. No wonder I'm partially sighted, that's what I say. This is my perspective on 10 cat laws to live by, and I hope kittens everywhere take note. So my list of 10 cat laws starts with asking to be let through a door. This one seems simple, but asking to be let through the door takes some skill to get right. Wait until your human is comfortable on the sofa and has relaxed, and then ask for the door to be opened. They may ignore you to start with, so you have to find something that really annoys them to get their attention. Just meowing loudly may not be enough. I found scratching the door does it. They get up and let you through the door and then close it again behind you. Now, and this is really important, you have to wait and give them time to sit down again and relax and then scratch on the door to be let back in. It drives them crazy and it works every time. My second law is the importance of bed making. I can't stress enough the importance of getting involved with changing the bed linen. Mummy never gets it quite how I like it unless I help. After the fun of stripping the bed and rolling in the sheets, the best part is the duvet cover. Endless possibilities for getting caught up inside it and creating chaos. Plus it takes mummy a lot longer. Hiding one scared is the next important law. Things happen in life that are scary, so it's important to have hideaways that you can disappear into. Practice will tell you which of your hideaways are most effective. When I first started hiding, I would forget things like my tail sticking out, duh, or I would purr and give away where I was. I now know the best places to disappear into. They work because mummy can't find me and starts to worry. I wait until she starts to sound a bit panicky and then make my appearance nonchalantly. That has the most effect in my experience and might even lead to treats. Now, coping with dog brothers. Mummy told me we cats were worshipped as gods in Egypt, which I think must be a place down the road somewhere. It's important to remember that when dealing with dogs and establish the ground rules early. When my two dog brothers arrived as puppies, they were easy to knock into shape and they know who is boss around here. They do clean my ears and they are nice to snuggle up to by the fire, but they are a bit smelly and noisy and boisterous. So pick your time to be with them when they are nice and quiet. And if they start barking, remember what I told you about your hiding place. Now then we turn to only use a clean litter tray. I have two cat brothers and a cat sister, so we have several litter trays around the house. If everyone stays in all night, particularly in winter, those trays can get filled up pretty quickly. Daddy's job in the morning is to clean out all the litter trays. It takes him quite a while to do, and he complains a lot while he's doing it. It is important to stand back and watch. If the bag he's putting it in splits, Things can get really interesting, so pay attention. When the tray is clean and full of new litter, don't be tempted. Be patient. Wait until he's washed his hands, got a cup of tea and gone to sit down and relax. Then take the litter tray by storm and enjoy the loud groans and comments coming from the other room. Halfway through my 10 cat laws to live by and so many good things still to come. Now then, never accept a medication without a treat. Owing to a problem with my cat brother, Treacle, which I will come back to, I had an eye injury that was very serious. The vet told mummy I could lose my eye, but in fact it was saved. But it has some scarring and is very dry, so I have to have artificial tears put in the eye twice each day. To start with, I resisted, dear friends, so undignified. But then I realised that if I allowed it to happen, I would be given a cat treat. So I gradually trained mummy and daddy so that I would only have the drops if I got a treat. It's important to make a big fuss at the time of the drops so it's clear the sacrifice that's being made. Though don't tell mummy, the drops aren't painful at all. The reward is worth it. Never give something away for nothing. 
Now, find a way to live with interlopers. For a long time, there was just me, my sister Emmy, who left us last year, and my big brother and sister Maltesa and Lucy. But a couple of years ago, mummy had to look after five kittens after their mummy got sick. Then one of them had to have major surgery. And guess what? He worked his magic on mummy and was added to the family. His name is Treacle and he is a horrible little oik. At three months old, he needed a lot of work, hissing and smacking, so he learned his place. As he got older, he tried to take over as boss cat and had to be put back in his place again. He's calmed down a lot now, but he still has wild moments. And what ought to be a playful rough and tumble can become quite painful. That's how I ended up with a bad eye. Okay, number eight, never accept an empty food bowl. A food bowl should be full with no sign of the bottom. Full stop. There is no other discussion. Sometimes I jump up on my window ledge and find I can see the bottom of the bowl. I can't describe the feeling of horror. I just stand and stare and stare in disbelief at the bowl and then at mummy until she refills the bowl. Don't ever settle for less. Now then, the importance of staring. Sometimes staring can be the only way to get attention, as mentioned before. Also, it's a good way to get a reaction, as they like the fact that you're looking at them. If you want some extra cuddles and attention, try staring. However, if you want to have fun, try staring at them for a long time for no particular reason. After a while, they start to freak out. My last law is about establishing a bedtime ritual. An important part of training your human is making sure there's a clear bedtime ritual. When daddy takes the dogs out for their bedtime walk and mummy is closing up the house and turning off lights, my ritual kicks in. Mummy likes it when I chase her ankles as she walks around the room turning off the lamps. She likes having to turn me out, turf me out of the bathroom when I've got into an awkward space she can't quite reach. She has to stop me going out the front door when she goes to bring in the food from the porch. I don't really want to go outside, but I love mummy's reaction when I try. Finally, I trained mummy to place my toy mice exactly how I like them overhanging the footstool. That means they're easy for me to find and play with in the night. That's my 10 cat laws to live by. I hope cats and kittens everywhere will find them useful. Now I'm off for a nap. This podcasting lark is exhausting. Mm.